Hello, this is Joel Lindstrom, and I wanted to talk about how to remove some of the standard Microsoft solutions from your environment. Not that we don't like these solutions. These solutions are all great if you need them. The problem is if you don't, say you set up a trial environment, it comes with a lot of stuff that you're not going to use. You don't want to create dependencies in your configuration that you will force you to have that solution installed in your upstream environments. So I'm going to go to the classic settings uh, in Dynamics. You could go to the new, new maker experience, the new solution experience at powerapps.com, but some of the things I'm going to show you aren't yet in there, and so this is why I do this from the classic settings environment. First thing is, click on the installed on date uh, field to sort in descending order. This is critical because it will show you the reverse order of which things were installed. So for example, Sales Navigator, we got LinkedIn Sales Navigator Anchor, LinkedIn Sales Navigator Controls for Unified Client, and LinkedIn. Uh, same thing with Field Service. Um, we have the CFS Patch 1, Connected Field Service. That is a clue that tells you the order in which you probably need to remove them. Sometimes that doesn't work, but uh, usually it's a good place to start. Second place I would look is go inside one of these solutions, for example, field service, and then go to the components tab. Once we're on the components tab, then you can see all of the entities and all the web resources and everything in here. I'm going to filter entities, and then I specifically want to select one of these entities that is specific to the field service solution, um, such as work order. Select one of the entities such as work order, and then you can click the solution layers button. This gives you some additional information about the layers that this solution's in. So this reiterates that we need to remove connected field service before we remove uh, field service. Another thing you might notice is there you'll see some solutions that contain the word patch. That's a sign too. You need to remove the patch for geofencing before you remove geofencing. So now I'm going to go ahead and get started and remove these solutions and I'll let you know when I'm done how it goes. At some point in the process, you're going to run across a dependency dialogue like this one. Uh, what this means is there is something that is dependent on this solution uh, that needs to be removed. In this case, it is a, uh, it's SDK message processing steps that run the uh, geofencing plugin when the latitude and longitude changes. So what you need to do is make note of what these items are. And these are, these are SDK message processing steps tied to the geofencing plugin. And you need to go remove them before continuing with the process. So then what I would do is I would go into, uh, there's several ways to do it. You could do it with the plugin registration tool. In case you're working in an environment that you can't run the plugin registration tool, uh, you can go to the default solution as well. Just go to customize my solution. And then you can go to the message processing steps, which is right here, SDK message processing steps. And from here, then look for the things tied to geofencing. And there we have it, the uh, bookable resource geofencing plugin uh, message processing step. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to uh, deactivate it and then delete it. And then I'll continue on with the process. And we are on the last solution, but as you can see, we got a dependency uh, warning. Uh, couldn't get through the last one without another dependency warning. And here's how you read this. So first of all, look at what it's required by. And you see here, user form and contact form. And what is it? Uh, there's two JavaScript uh, web resources. That means that these forms contain uh, form events that call these web resources. The fortunate thing is you got a hyperlink right here, so I can just jump over to those forms, delete those uh, form events, and then publish those forms, and then go delete this solution again. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Now that I've removed the web resources from the forms for contact and user, I can once again delete the field service solution and it will be removed successfully this time. So we've now gone through the whole process, 
deleted all those solutions, deleted the dependencies as they come up, and uh, it took us about 45 minutes to an hour, uh, but we were able to successfully remove that. The same approach that I followed for this could apply to any of the first party apps that Microsoft installs, uh, including customer service hub, field service, project service, LinkedIn sales navigator. And that way you can get your environment down to just what you need so you don't have those dependencies in there. Thanks for reading CRM Tip of the Day. I'm Joel Lindstrom.